What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about how Chelsea can survive without Reese James. We all know that Reese James has now picked up an injury that is going to keep him out for the next six to eight weeks, so pretty much up until the end of the World Cup and hopefully for no longer than that and that is a huge issue for Chelsea because the impact that Reese had on the team cannot be understated. Honestly, this guy was pretty much becoming our Eden Hazard at this point. He was getting goals, he was getting assists and he was pocketing the best wingers in the world including Zaha, Rafael Liao, etc. Vinicius Junior last season. Honestly, this is such a big impact and last season Obviously, Reese also had a big injury, and we tried to survive from that, and it really, really derailed our season. So hopefully, this year we can actually figure out how to survive without Reese James and not have it derail our season like it did last season. So that's what we're going to be going through in this video. And I've got two things to say before we get fully into this video. And one, I've been very sick over the last couple of days, so if I sound a bit weird or look a bit weird, then apologies for that because you know it's not been a good past couple of days. And also, I have a bone to pick with you lot because 70% of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed, and that is an absolute disgrace. So if you're Watching this video right now and you haven't clicked that red button below and you haven't clicked that bell notification next to that red button you better do that right now because 70 percent is an absolute disgrace of a number honestly i cannot believe it we need to get that number up i'm trying to get towards 2,000 subscribers as quick as possible so do help me out also make sure to like the video and comment down below what you think is the best solution to this rechange problem and now we're going to get into it so the way i'm going to structure this video is we're going to be going through academy players first then more options that we've seen already and then last we're going to go through some very very obscure options that maybe Graham Potter will pull out the bag so let's get into Dion Rankin now just to talk about him as a player he's 20 years old to 20 years old today as I'm filming this video also as I'm filming this video he's playing Manchester United in the PL2 so maybe he scores on something in this video I'm not sure but very simply who is Dion Rankin he's pretty much Tarek Lamptey to be honest he's incredibly pacey potentially faster than Tarek Lamptey honestly the guy's an absolute joke you'll see him just pick up the ball kick it past the player and just chase it that's how easily he does it very electric very direct loves a goal whether that's a normal goal cutting in or if it's arriving at the back post which he does really really well often the left wing that will cut it across and he'll finish it at the back post he's also quite creative he's not a specialist crosser like Reece James but because of his pace allowing him to get into open spaces without much pressure because he likes it because he gets away from players so easily it gives him more time to be able to pick out a cross and find the right man in the box now there are a couple things to note with Dion Rankin and firstly that is that right now he's actually playing as a left winger for under 21 Steve and the reason for that is mainly because our under-21s currently are playing with a fullback formation. Now, Dion defensively isn't the greatest player. He's not terrible, but in terms of awareness and his wanting to go forwards constantly, it often leaves spaces in behind. So when we play a fullback, we have a very, very capable right back in Derek Abu, who I'm going to get onto later as another potential option. And Dion Rankin has actually been playing as a left winger. So that's very interesting to see. I'd have to say that with Dion Rankin, it's pretty simple for me. He needs to get called up to first team training, which he already has on multiple occasions of recent since Potter's come in and during the international break. If he impresses in first team training, then I see no reason why he shouldn't be given an opportunity because there's definitely an open space for him to try and take his opportunity. And he's a very, very talented player. But if he's coming up and he's not really impressing, he's not really tickling Potter's fancy, then there's no need for him to play. I'm not going to be one of those guys that says every academy player has to make it. That's not how it works. If this was Tino Livramento, I'd absolutely be telling you that this guy should be given minutes, minutes, minutes. Trust me, he's going to be insane. This is what I was saying a year ago before he went off to Southampton and during that season. So if it was Livramento, I'd be saying the same. But I don't think Dion Rankin is quite Tino Livramento. He definitely has the qualities in there to be maybe that caliber of player. But he's also got some of the stuff that come against him, maybe consistency, maybe being a bit too one-dimensional in terms of always using his pace. But, you know, he's got the qualities there. And if there was one manager to really bring out the qualities of a player, that is Graham Potter. We've seen him do it with players like Tarek Lamptey, who are very similar to Dion Rankin himself. So it really is up to Potter to make his mind up on this. I'm not going to force, I'm not going to say that he should be doing something if he doesn't do it. That is completely fine. So the next player we're going to go into is Derek Abu. I'm going to keep this on short because for me, Abu is a good player, but he's not quite there yet and he's quite young. He's only a second year scholar. So basically when you come into the academy at 16 years old, you get a two year scholarship. Usually in that first year scholarship, you play with the under 18s and second year, you're trying to get into the under 21s so that's really where Abu is right now and it's good to see him getting consistent into the under 21s and it really should just stay at that obviously I'm always happy to see academy players get first team opportunities get into training but we're not going to overdo it and I don't think he really should be coming into the first team at this point I don't think he's ready but now we're getting into some options that we've already seen play in these positions and how it could translate into the future so the first thing I'm going to talk about is Ruben Loftus-Cheek we've seen him play in this right wing back position specifically an inverted right wing back position under Thomas Tuchel and he looked really really good there every single time he played he looked really 
good at the Bernabeu. I thought he was absolutely brilliant against Tottenham earlier in the season. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. So there really is something to weigh up here. Does love to cheat players the right wing back now that Rhys James has gone? For me, I would say that he is our main person in that position. I definitely would think that. But there are problems with this. I think that firstly, people have to remember that Lotus Cheek has injury problems of his own. He's always had a problem with getting niggles, getting small injuries. Even last season, after he'd come back from his huge Achilles injury, he was still getting small injuries. So can we rely on him to play 90 minutes as a wing back every single game? Almost definitely not. He will get injured too, so we have to be careful of that. And second, even though he will be playing as a right wing back, he's not off. He's not an absolutely solid right wing back. He's an inverted right wing back. He's not going to be like Rhys James. Rhys James was able to come inverted, go into the midfield half spaces, as well as going round outside and getting crosses in. Loftus Cheek is definitely more geared towards moving through the midfield zone because that's where he naturally plays. So if I'm going to show you an average position thing right now. This is from the Tottenham game. You can see that Rhys James being the num uh, number 24 and Loftus Cheek being the number 12. Even Rhys James playing as a right center back that game was getting into those positions but Loftus Cheek was even coming more inverted even though he was a right wing back in that game so for me if you're going to play Loftus Cheek while Rhys James is injured which I think is the right decision to do I think he's got incredible pace power strength dribbling everything for that position then I think you need to play a wide winger in the 3-4-3 I think maybe the solution to this is playing Raheem Sterling as a right winger along with uh, Loftus Cheek so that allows someone to be occupying that right wing space so that that isn't just completely left behind because even though you can play specific players in specific positions if you're just completely removing someone on the touchline on the right wing then for me that just gives the left back nothing to do and you lose an opportunity to attack in a specific area so for me if I was to play Loftus-Cheek as a right wing back Sterling would be the right winger obviously he can move inwards he can move outwards but he should be a threat on that right wing so that we're not just leaving that zone free because it's unlikely that Loftus-Cheek is attacking that right wing that wide area that often because he likes to come inverted but it's definitely a position I like to see. The only other thing with Loftus-Cheek playing as a wing back which is similar to the inverted thing we were talking about earlier is that Loftus Cheek isn't really a supreme crosser. We know that Rhys James, he was he basically did it all, but one of the things he did very well was crossing the ball. He's an absolutely brilliant crosser. Obviously, got that assist against AC Milan to Aubameyang with a beautiful cross. Can Loftus Cheek do that? Maybe he can work on it, but it's never really been something that he's had to do specifically to be able to cross from the byline because he's never really played in that position. So, if Sterling played on that right wing position, he'd probably have to take the burden of trying to get those crosses in at the byline, and hopefully, that's something he can adjust to. Another obvious player we're going to talk about who's played in this position before is Cesar Aspilicueta. Quetta. Now, a lot of people have seen what I think about Cesar Aspilicueta on my Twitter. Obviously, I love the guy as a person. He's an absolute legend. I love Dave, but I do think he is a very past it. But to be fair to him, he looks very good against Worlds. Now, do I think that's sustainable? Absolutely not. I think fans do this too much where they see Aspilicueta have one good performance and then he ruins us the next game. But going off that basis, Aspilicueta, he's still going to be someone that clearly will have to be as well regime is injured. That's just a fact. And he looked good against Wolves. Wolves was a bit of a fullback, but Pulisic was playing as a left wing and often he came deep and it almost formed a five back. And if you look at the average positions from Rhys James playing and Aspilicueta playing, they pretty much are filling the exact same position. I'll show on screen now. Rhys James and Aspilicueta are really pretty much in the same position in the average position screen, showing that it doesn't really make a difference who's playing and they play actually quite similar, although the qualities are very different. I'm not going to waste too much time on Aspilicueta because you all know what kind of player Aspilicueta is, but he is obviously someone that can fit this role, hopefully more as a five than a four. People might think it would be better as a four given that he plays as a four back in the day, but if you're going to play Aspilicueta, I think you need to play a five simply because he doesn't have the recovery pace that he used to have and having someone in behind him at right and back will make us less exposed to defensive transitions. Hopefully Chalaba, well it would have been better to have Fafana, but Chalaba of recent has looked very, very solid, so hopefully he can keep it up. Hopefully it's not too much pressure on him because he might crack if he's constantly put under pressure with Aspilicueta not being able to recover but as long as there's someone behind Aspilicueta it should be just about fine but you all know I'm quite skeptical of Aspilicueta. Now the last section we're going to go into is pretty much Potter madness. We all know that Graham Potter likes to throw random people into random position. All Brighton fans told us this before he came in, in charge and this is something I'm going to throw a few players in where he could maybe throw them in and you didn't really expect them to play them. Mostly we're going to be working with the wingers and the first couple of players we're going to talk about is players like Raheem Sterling, Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech. We've already seen Sterling play as a wing back under Graham Potter against Salzburg in his first game. He plays a left wing back though interestingly in that game and it works really really well. He was playing as a left wing back but actually when you looked at his average position he was the furthest player up on the pitch he was playing purely as a left winger in his average position constantly trying to get him behind so could we see something like this just on the other side now Sterling has played very a lot of the time for Man City as a right winger and even under Graham Potter we saw him linking up with Rhys James against AC Milan I believe on that right wing so I think Raheem Sterling is definitely a player that could fill that right wing position do I think it's perfect no and also I think that Dion Rankin as much as Sterling is definitely a better player in terms of the player you're looking for in that right wing position what Sterling will be doing mostly Graham Potter will be looking at Sterling to exploit his pain 
case in that position. So do I think there's much point in playing Sterling there? If you have Dion Rankin, probably not. But once again, as I said, Dion Rankin just has to uh, impress in first-team training if he wants that opportunity. So I'd definitely be interested to see Sterling at that rhyming position. It's something that I can see Graham Potter just pulling out the hat. Christian Pulisic, another one that fits that mould that I'm talking about, but we all saw him at right wing back under Thomas Tuchel, especially that game against Southampton when he came off the bench. Blimey, that was absolutely horrible. Please never play Pulisic there. I don't care who's the manager. And then we had Hakim Ziyech, who actually played very well at right wing back under Thomas Tuchel. During that January period, we played a sort of hybrid four-back, five-back formation where Ziyech would be a right winger when going forwards, but in defence, he's slot in as a right wing back. It would make us very compact. Would this be something I'd be interested in seeing again? I don't see why not. I think Ziyech has been on terrible form, but never say never in football. So maybe Graham Potter tries it in one or two games. I don't think it's something sustainable. I think Ziyech gets injured quite a lot. I don't think he's been on good form. I just don't see it working out in the long term, but it is definitely an option that Graham Potter might pursue. And you have a couple of ridiculous ones. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised because Graham Potter is an absolute madman. And when people see this on the team sheet, they might go crazy. But someone like Mason Mount or Conor Gallagher at right wing back, I honestly wouldn't put it past Potter to do that and have some sort of incredible plan. I mean, they are both very, very active players. They like to run about. They have incredible stamina. They have incredible pressing. Is it ideal to play them at wing back? Probably not. But Potter often has tricks up his sleeve and no, that is not meant to be some clever joke. But I'm just putting it out there because I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Mason Mount or Conor Gallagher, one of them two playing as a right wing back. So there you go. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to let me know what you think is the best solution to this right wing back issue at Chelsea. I really bloody hope that Rich James is back as soon as possible because he is so, so important to this Chelsea team. I honestly can't overstate it. But before we end this video, make sure to like again, subscribe to get us closer to 2,000 subscribers, comment down below, and I will see you next time.